even the presidential chef can make a mess. My name is Crust Master, AKA Bill Yassis. I was the pastry chef for President George W. Bush, First Lady Laura Bush, President Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama, and for all of the guests who came through the White House. In this special episode, I'm gonna share with you the recipe for one of the Bush family's favorite holiday desserts, sticky toffee pudding. Sticky toffee pudding is a dessert with a historical background from Scotland. It's very old. It is rich, satisfying, warm, and very holiday. Let's hit it. This traditional holiday dessert was one of the favorites of the Bush guests at the White House. And it's an unusual recipe in that we start by mixing the liquids first. Safflower oil or any neutral oil and a molasses. You're gonna wanna have a a spatula handy. The next ingredient is the sour cream and it kind of sticks to the container so you're going to need the spatula again. Vanilla. Okay, let's add the eggs and now we're going to stop, lift and add the brown sugar. Let's lower it slowly. Now we can lock it in place. One of the reasons that we uh, run the machine with these ingredients in it, these liquid ingredients, is to be sure they're well blended, but also we're introducing a little bit of air. Since we have two eggs in there, the air is gonna to start to incorporate and that will give us a lighter product in the end. Something that I think a lot of people don't realize is how important the holiday entertaining is at the White House. Some of it's not covered in the press. Some of it is just a way for uh, the president and his family to thank those who have worked so hard during the year. Uh, so from the end of November until about 20 days into December, we serve about 22,000 people. And planning for this starts in July. Every year at Christmas at the White House, there is a particular theme. And a lot of thought goes into this. So the theme is determined by the First Lady's team in the East Wing and the First Lady herself. So the themes, although they may sound general, are things like deck the halls, welcome all, uh, all creatures, great and small, and home for the holidays. So they're rather generic, but they dictate everything that is decided down to the bakery items that we offer. Okay, this is ready. Now we're on to the dry ingredients. Flour, ginger, nutmeg, cinnamon, a small pinch of cloves, cardamom, salt, and baking soda. We start out by only putting half the flour in the bottom and then the other dry ingredients, and we're gonna add the other half of the flour later. And this is so that those smaller ingredients are really well mixed. You can lift it up, fold your parchment paper like this, kind of, this is a little hack where you block off the end. And then you have like this funnel which can go right into the uh, liquid ingredients. I'm gonna lift the mixer out of the way so we have more room to work. And then I'm gonna start to add the dry ingredients. Let's add about one third. Again, we'll start the machine when it's a just a barely above the surface. There we go. So now we're gonna add the rest of our flour. It's always nice to keep a clean surface when you're working. So all this extra from your counter and you can add back in. Even the presidential chef can make a mess. Okay, the last ingredient uh, is, again, what, something that makes this recipe quite different from others, is a significant amount of water, one cup of water. And the reason for this is that we want to sort of loosen this batter up so that the baking powder and the flour can rise up evenly and add a lot more air and lightness to the cake. We're looking for this whole thing to become incorporated. Look at the difference now. It was like a thick, almost paste before, and now it's a really a liquid batter. One key thing we have to do is scrape down the sides and really go down to the bottom, scrape the bottom, because if anything did get caught there, like flour or any part, uh, you'll be able to feel it. So one of the things I like about this recipe is that it's, it is so adaptable to whatever the event is. If you're having a dinner party, you have people at the table, you wanna serve individual portions. You could do individual portions, either in these ramekins or in a fancy mold. The other thing you could do, and we've done both of these at the White House, by the way, is do family style. So you might wanna bake your sticky toffee pudding in a large container like this and serve it hot at the table. This recipe that we just made with you is enough to fill 
six of these smaller molds. Um, of course, if you're doing the larger mold, you just multiply the amounts. I mean, the typical recipe we would have done was between 10 and 15 times this many. That would be 10 pounds of flour. And I mean, some days we might make a, use the whole bag, 25 pound bag of flour. Okay, life hack. When your uh, spray is full, it works well. But you know how when you get to the bottom of the can and then it's just like spurting out little by little? Here's something that helps. These cans work better when they're upright. So don't go like this to spray your molds. Hold the mold up and... Now for these particular types of molds that have this center ring, be sure you get the center ring. You can grease your measuring cup that you're gonna use for a pour so it comes out easily. So next step is I'm going to pour the batter into this pouring vessel. I'm gonna fill the six of these bunt shaped molds and then two of the ramekin. You only fill the molds three quarters of the way up. It has baking soda and air incorporated, so you don't want it to overflow like a volcano. We're putting it on a sheet pan because it's safer and easier to grab a sheet pan and move it all together than to grab them individually. We're gonna bake this at 350 for about 18 minutes. And you have two different materials there. You have a porcelain ramekin and a metal mold. So you might, there might be some variation in the cooking time you wanna take a toothpick to test them to make sure they're baked all the way. So while these are baking in the oven, we're gonna make the sticky toffee pudding sauce, a very important part of the dessert. But before we get into that, story time. Christmas, as we mentioned earlier, is a huge undertaking at the White House. Planning starts in July, we talked about that, we talked about our themes, and the work begins in earnest the day after Thanksgiving. So usually there's a Thanksgiving party, the families uh, will have friends and relatives or whatever they decide to do for Thanksgiving. And then the next day, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are three days of absolutely frantic, hysterical activity. Going from the White House as it normally is to full on dressed holiday White House. It takes a lot of people behind the scenes and it all takes place within those, um, those three short days. Typically, in both cases, the Bushes and the Obamas sort of disappeared. The, maybe they went to Camp David or the Bushes might have gone to Texas, but they sort of got out of the way, uh, so to speak, uh, and let people really put the decorations up. The other kickoff is when the big tree, uh, which is sort of the centerpiece of all the other trees, it's what goes into the blue room, the room with the tallest ceiling. Uh, and this is a process that goes way back. Uh, the chief usher is usually the person who goes to choose the tree. Uh, it's always like perfectly formed. It comes, it's delivered to the White House in a horse-drawn carriage, uh, all decorated with big holiday bows. Uh, it comes to the front of the house, goes in the north portico, and is then lifted into the blue room. But it's a real engineering feat. The tree is at least 20, 25 feet tall. And remember, it's gonna get a lot of ornaments. The whole ornament story is, is another story. Ornaments are made all over the country from many different sources. But the carpenters and the engineers work together to make sure that this tree is stable. The tree defies gravity. You would not guess that all of these ornaments um, little doodads, decorations, ribbons, tinsel, you name it, could stay on this tree and the whole thing stand up straight. It's a holiday miracle. Something not generally known is that a lot of these workers are volunteers. So there is a system at the White House where florists, decorators, uh, ribbon makers, people who just love the holidays, who love to decorate, um, volunteer to come at the White House and this is all managed by the florist department in the White House and so you get about I would guess 60 to 100 people who come in on that day we talked about the Friday the day after Thanksgiving and they start frenetically working putting things together all these elves come together and it's a really it's a really fun period I have to say so the sauce is very simple it's only three ingredients it's cream brown sugar and butter but it's done in a manner that is formed into an emulsion, and we'll talk about what that is. We're gonna start out with the cream and the sugar. Very important that you can bring that to a boil, medium to high heat is fine. Uh, but then you need to turn it down because when we add the butter, 
what we're going to do is look for our emulsion. An emulsion is one liquid suspended in another. That's the simplest way to say it. But in this case, and is so often the case, it's fat and liquid. So the butter is the fat, liquid is the cream, and we want this butter to be dispersed evenly in the cream. You'll notice we use dark brown sugar. Light brown sugar is fine as well. Dark brown sugar actually has a higher percentage of molasses. Molasses is basically what's known as the impurities of sugar making. And in brown sugar, they've added that molasses back into the refined white sugar. I really love molasses. To me, that's the, that's holiday. So here you see it's starting to boil. Then we're gonna turn this down uh, because once the butter goes in, you don't want it to boil. So here we're gonna add our butter. I just cut the sticks into two different pieces. And of course the, the hot liquid is gonna melt the butter, but this is where you cannot stop whisking so that every bit of that butter as it melts gets incorporated into what you have started, which is the brown sugar and the heavy cream. You'll also notice that in the beginning, the butter forms sort of like a slick, an oil slick on the top. That, you want to incorporate that as quickly as possible. You don't want it to be shiny on the top. You want it to be an opaque, dull color on the top. And then as you get to the end, you can just let the residual heat take over. Continue stirring as long as necessary. And then we'll just add one little professional trick at the end, We're going to use an immersion blender to really incorporate that butter into the liquid. What you're doing there is the little droplets of butter get smaller and smaller as your immersion blender blade cuts them into smaller pieces. So the smaller the bits of butter, the tighter your emulsion, and the more silky it is on your palate. Our dessert is ready to go, and now we're gonna make the creme fraiche garnish or topping for the dessert. We're adding our creme fraiche. I'm not adding any sugar to this. Um, you saw how much sugar went into that recipe as we were putting it together. So it really doesn't need any more. And creme fraiche whips just like heavy cream does. Uh, in fact, it works faster. I served the Bush family for their final two years in office. And the themes for those holidays were national parks. And the last one was red, white, and blue. So the National Park Service is one of the most incredible parts of our government and something I was not very much aware of. Mrs. Bush wanted to celebrate the National Park Service for all their hard work and sort of their invisibility in the public mind. Very few other countries have as much acreage under their protection as our National Park Service. Not only is it protected, but it's so well maintained. That theme translated into um, everything on the dessert buffet. So like most of the cookies were leaves from different kinds of American trees, oak, maple, chestnut, etc. And then there were some forest animals as part of the cookies. That's, that was our participation in it. As for the red, white, and blue, their final year, President Bush really wanted that final year to be an inflection point. Uh, when you think back on that time, a very, very painful time for our country. So what they wanted to do was really commemorate the courage and efforts of our armed forces. So we used a lot of patriotic symbols on the dessert table. There, of course, you had flags and, and other uh, eagles, all the types of things that you would normally associate with patriotism in America. Now that our creme fraiche is ready, uh, we're going to put it into this vessel and get ready to make our presentation. And when we serve this cake, we're going to cut it horizontally and you'll be able to see all those really dense spongy holes and that's great for soaking up sauce. Now we're going to pour the sauce on. And the final garnish is the creme fraiche. One thing I like about this dessert is that it's always moist. I mean, this is like the minimum amount of sauce that you should serve with your sticky toffee pudding. And we really like the contrast with the unsweetened creme fraiche or sour cream and the sweetness of the cake itself. It's rich, it's moist, it's balanced. That molasses really comes through. Uh, so you know you're in the holidays. This is definitely presidentially approved. <laughs> if I were president. <laughs> I hope you try this recipe at home. And for more holiday recipes, you can find more at delish.com 
or in my book, The Sweet Spot, Happy Baking.